Ask an Attorney is sponsored by the Law Offices of Joe Pippen. Learn more at A-T-T-Y-P-I-P. Ask an Attorney about Florida law. Ask an Attorney, just give him a call. This is Ask an Attorney, all about Florida law with attorney Joe Pippen. If you have a legal question, call Joe right now in Tampa. Call 813-287-5700. Anywhere else, toll free at 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. The law office is open. And now your host, Joe Pippen. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. <clears throat> I'm Attorney Joe Pippen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Practicing attorney, the law office is open. <clears throat> and if you have a legal question, then you have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. So again, I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law, host of Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law for uh, a little past 37 years now. If you have a legal question, I'm here to help you this morning. Or if you just have a problem, I'm here to help you. Your toll-free number is 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. And phone lines are open. Hey, your question can be just about any area of law. It can be about wills, trust, probate, guardianship, power attorneys, health care surrogates, living wills can be about family law, real estate law. Just a problem if you have. I'd love to help you. This is the day after Christmas 2020. It's been quite a year. And uh, maybe you've been involved in something you need a little direction with or help with. Or maybe something just come up. Hey, I get questions about things with um, disputes with family members, disputes on the job, not being treated right uh, on some family member. Could be an estate. Lots of things come up with estates that uh, you might have a question about. So again, I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. I always like that first caller coming in. If I can help you, if you have a legal situation, a legal problem, hey, give us a call. You have a toll-free number, 877-943-9673. Hey, it's the day after Christmas, and you know we're getting ready for New Year's, and a lot of people make New Year's resolutions. So I'd like to talk about that a little bit. What kind of resolutions should you be making? You know, everybody uh, wants to get fit, lose weight. A lot of people want to get their finances and legal matters in order. And I think that's a great resolution. Um, state plans should be reviewed about every three or four years. And whether you've had any major changes or not, sometimes documents change, sometimes tax laws change. Uh, maybe someone in your family's passed away and that's going to change your document. Maybe you're having uh, thoughts now about providing education for grandchildren. You want to, you, something wants to change. You've got a family member that went through a divorce. You have some family relationship that uh, passed away. You've got a situation with grandchildren that you'd like to take care of. All kinds of things can happen to make you want to change your state plan. That'd be a great resolution to dig, dig, get all those documents out. Look at the beneficiaries on certain things. Sometimes you name a beneficiary and that person's deceased and there's no contingent beneficiary. All kinds of things like that uh, would make putting, getting your affairs in order, getting your financial and estate and legal matters all in order. It would be a great uh, resolution for you to think about. Let's go to Phil in Orange Park. Good morning and happy day after Christmas. Um, well, Joseph, <clears throat> my condolences on your loss. Uh, December 12, 12 years ago, my loving mother, who was my uh, everything that your mother was to you, I believe it was your mother or mother-in-law, passed away. Yeah, it was my uh, mother. Mm-hmm. Go through the old pictures, stay strong for your family, and tears are okay. Uh, my question is, uh, you haven't heard from me in a while because of my cancer and stuff, but it's not bone cancer or pancreatic cancer, so I'm doing better. But I called uh, my last uh, quarter, I made approximately a little over, uh, I've been doing it every quarter the last couple of years, uh, uh, about 90000 on part of my portfolio, which is my uh, 
I guess you call that dividend interest, profit, whatever. Uh, I just roll it over, but uh, this time I want to pull it out and put it into uh, use, I guess, not for myself, but for good causes. By doing that, how, I mean, it, 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 am All right, I this is your to... retirement? This is your retirement account? No, no, no. I, this is an inheritance portfolio of the big dollars that averages uh, for the last five, six years, average 90 to 99,000 profit every quarter. Uh, that's my <clears throat> dividend, whatever you call it. I, I just roll it over, roll it over, roll it over. But uh, I want to do something with this. Yeah. Money. So, well, uh, uh, it's, when I pull it out, uh, am I subject to the 40% tax? or? How it it depends on your tax bracket. Well, uh, it's... I pay zero. I'm like uh, Donald Trump and my mom and dad and others. I either pay a dollar or zero. Very good accountants. Well, uh, I think it depends on wh what exactly you take out. Uh, do you have a financial advisor that you work with? Yes, I have a cousin uh, up in Princeton, New Jersey. Who, uh, well, I have your cousin look at your plan and t uh, figure out a plan to minimize the taxes on the money that you want to distribute. You know, I you might. To I want to donate it to a good cause. There's yeah, but you time. have uh, you have capital gains. You possibly, if you sell certain things, you've now if it was right. a retirement account of some mm -hmm. type, you can distribute up to a hundred thousand out of a retirement cl uh, plan oh, with wow. no taxes. Oh wow! I appreciate that. Wow! I can look into my retirement account. On yeah, that yeah. You can maybe pull money out of your retirement account instead of doing your regular financial account. Yes, is ninety two, so it's. Pretty up there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, and listen, uh, I, I don't want to be uh, take uh, in your time, but I appreciate it. And uh, prayers are welcome. And I'll pray for you and stay strong because your mother's spirit will always be with you. Always. God Phil, you. Phil, you keep talking about meeting with me. I think your resolution should be let's let's go meet with Joe on um, weekend. Well, He's up up there. I have four drivers that take me anywhere I want to go. They're usually younger than I am, neighbors and good friends, non-relatives. And, uh, uh, well, next time you're in Ponte Vedra or something, beginning, well, why don't we look at the beginning of January or 2nd, and I have Yeah, well, hey, you could drive over to the radio well, station well, there. Plus, and... I have your uh, your shirts that my sister never mailed with your, key lo with your Largo. Oh, there you go. So I can, I can, uh, we can, you can fit them and try them, you know? You could, yeah. uh, you could come over to the radio station one Saturday morning just for a few minutes. That would be cool. Certainly, that would be All cool. Right. All right, we'll get together then. Thank you, and Merry right. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Phil. All right. Hey, you're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. Hey, if I can help you this day after Christmas 2020, please give us a call, 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. The law office is open open and willing to uh, talk to you and give you some help but put you in the right direction. Have you ever noticed on this show it's a 52-minute straight run, no commercials? It's going to be one of the few shows that you never get a commercial on. And the reason why is I just don't like to be interrupted with uh, the flow of the show on commercials. So they play them all at the end. We end at 8.52. And they, uh, they, they play all the commercials at the end of the show. That's, that's by design. You know, why get distracted or why interrupt the flow of the show with a commercial if you don't have to? And certainly, so that's uh, brought to you uh, at my pleasure and here to help you in any way I can. If you have a legal question and I don't know the answer, hey, I'm pretty quick to tell you I don't, don't know if I don't know. Uh, but I have resources. I have ways to find out and help you and figure out your situation. It doesn't even have to be a legal question. It can just be a problem you're facing. Uh, if you'd like to call the show again, it's 877, toll-free number, 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673, and phone lines are open. A lot of the uh, resolutions you might make might have to do with insurance, too. I think it's always good to review and update uh, automobile insurance. And speaking of automobiles, who should be the owner of a car for asset protection? Now, that's a, a, a good question, because if you loan your car to someone and they have an accident, guess what? You get, you're the one that owns the car. They always sue the owner of the car. They sue the driver, the owner of the car. So if you're married, 
How should you own a car? Well, if you're married, you put the car in the name of the primary driver. If the primary driver owns the car, then there's a lawsuit when the primary driver is driving the car. It's only against the uh, primary driver. If the, if the assets are, if you're married and you own assets jointly, tenants by the entirety, that's the common way to own assets as a married couple, then they can't sue one of you to get two assets held jointly. Car ownership is very, very important. Loaning your car um, is very, very important. You have friends that visit you in Florida. You don't want to be loaning your car out to anyone. Hey, if you have a legal question, your phone lines are open. You have a toll-free number, 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. Let's go to John in Bradington. Hey, John. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. And you? I'm good. Thank you. I have a question. Um, my wife and I own three uh, beach vacation rentals uh, that we do not have an LLC. They're, we just own them. We actually own uh, three of our four properties free and clear. Looking to put them possibly in LLCs. Uh, do they need to be individually in LLCs based upon the equity that's in them? Yeah, I would. That's the, exactly the answer way I would answer that question. Some people own a bunch of uh, LLC or rental properties, and they just have to decide how many um, LLCs they want to create. So, what the answer usually is is based on equity. If you have ten LLCs and you have seven of them heavily mortgaged, you could put all of them in in one. And then, if there is a lawsuit on one, then you haven't lost really much equity if they go after those. If you have a couple okay. of paid off in full and you want to protect each one, and if there's a lawsuit on one, you don't want that lawsuit to affect the other, other ownership, then you have separate LLCs. Okay. And the LLC will will do its, what it's supposed to do in case of a lawsuit, correct? I mean, that's yeah, what the primary should Yeah, it is. should be uh, at least two owners of an LLC, though. It shouldn't be a sole, sole LLC, so it could be... It could be a husband and wife, that's two people, but if it's not a husband and wife and you want to control it totally and you just want the asset protection, then you do 99% to one owner and 1% to the other, basically. So you always have okay. two, you know, try to have two owners on an LLC. Okay. What kind of expense should I be looking at for that? Well, I think any uh, every attorney is going to be slight, slightly different in their fee schedule, so you probably need to ask, uh, you know, several attorneys for a fee quotes. We charge like seven fifty for an LLC. Okay. okay. Well, great. Well, I appreciate your help. Been very helpful. All right, John. Thanks for calling. All right, you're listening to Ask an Attorney <clears throat> All About Florida Law. I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. And if I can help you in any way at all, you have a toll-free number. Again, it's 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. So we're getting close to the end of the year. Um, one of the strategies that people use is gifting. So the question is, how much money can you gift every year? and not have to report it to the federal government. So the rule is you can give away 15000 per year per person to as many different people as you want without having to report it to the federal government. So if you're giving away a $15,000 check to a child, an adult child, what you need to know is you know they might look at your other gifts too if you give couple hundred dollars for birthday presents or uh, this or that anniversaries or Christmas gifts you got to consider that you can't really give away if there was an audit with the IRS more than 15,000 per year so you might not want to write a check for 15,000 at the end of the year you might want to figure out how what other gifts you've made during the year and write it write it for a little bit less if you're giving uh, money to a married child, you can give 15000 to them and 15000 to their spouse. So technically, if uh, you are a married couple, you can give away $60,000 if you wanted to. If you wanted to uh, remove some money from your estate to make gifts, it could be 15000 to son or daughter, 15000 to their spouse, and your spouse could do the same thing. 
If you give away more than 15000 per person, you can simply fill out a what's called a 709 gift tax return. And you can advise the government you've given away more than fifteen per person. And you can elect not to pay a tax and use up part of your lifetime exemption. Well, hey, your lifetime exemption now is $11.5 million. So gifting is a strategy. It's uh, probably less of a strategy than it used to be because the federal exemption is so high. So you could die and leave $11.5 million tax-free with no tax. And it's just the government doesn't want to allow you to give away everything one day without a tax implication. So they put the rule of about the $15,000 in there. Hey, again, I'm attorney Joe Pippen. It's about 18 on the day after Christmas. If you have a legal question, the law office is open. And we are more than glad to help you in any way we possibly can. You have a toll-free number, 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. And, and more than glad to help you in any way we can. Hey, we did a series of Zoom seminars last year. Over a 14-week period, we're doing a Zoom seminar every other week. So we have seven of them. And we've saved them on a YouTube channel. We created a, U- a legal um, YouTube channel. And any one of those or all of them are available to you. So the topics were estate planning, living trust, asset protection, family law, Medicaid, uh, asset protection law, and guns, uh, and concealed weapon permit law. So if you would like to link to one or all of, or any of those, or all of them, you can send me an email, joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y, P-I-P, Dot com. That's Joe at a t t y p i p dot com. So maybe one of your New Year resolution goals would be to to learn more about one of those topics. And there's an educational uh, seminar just for you on wills and trust, and avoiding probate, and living trust and asset protection, Medicaid, VA law family law, and concealed weapon and gun gun law. Any of those would be more than glad to uh, assist you. Let's go to uh, Terry in Palmetto. Morning, Joe. Hey, good morning. Hey, I had a, a question about a trust. My wife and I have a trust. Uh, the personal representative is my daughter. Upon our demise... Do I need to get a letter? Now, we we have the trust, which is about, what, 30 pages? I'm guessing. I'm, I'm not looking at it. 30, 40 pages. What do I get or who do I, do I have to go to the court or a lawyer to verify the trust? Because when when she sends that to the investment companies and all the people you send death certificates to, uh, do I need a form from the legal uh, aspect, you know, uh, that she is indeed the personal representative, or do I just – have her send death certificates that was my question yeah well when you have a trust the personal representative uh, the terminology is uh, with a trust you have a successor trustee i guess that would be your daughter when you draft yes. when you draft a will you're you, yes. it's called personal representative some places call yes. it executor in florida's personal representative so if you have assets in your trust the will is not involved in that because the trust controls what's in the trust so if you how do you, now you said you were married? Yes. You, so you and your wife have a joint trust? Correct. So if you both die, your daughter would take your trust. So she needs to get her hands, be able to get her hands on a, an original. Yes. She, yes. she would take your trust to the bank with both death certificates. She, oh, okay. she should have gone to an attorney before she goes in there. The attorney will do a notice of trust that has to be filed. Do an acceptance uh, of trustee, acceptance of trustee uh, document, and yes. get and get the trust a tax number because the trust becomes a different entity upon death. Ah, uh, 
Okay. Now, all of that is great you did a trust because if you had a probate, it'd be a 3%, yes. 3 to 6% cost to the probate everything. If it's in a trust, there's no probate. It's much easier. There are a few steps to follow. <laughs> the best thing for your daughter to do would be to have an attorney to yeah. uh, just walk, have a half an hour meeting with an attorney to prepare the acceptance of trustee, and get the tax number, get your daughter prepared to go into the bank to collect the assets. Her job then is to pay the bills, do the taxes, and then make, and then she can distribute everything to excellent. herself, and then it's over. Okay, excellent. Okay, Joe, thank you very much. I've, I've wondered about that for over the years, you know. And, you know, you're conscientious enough to go and uh, listen to experts like you about getting a trust, and then... Then I have some questions after the fact, you know, because, uh, okay, thank you very Always much. Always glad to help. Thanks so much. Happy New Year to you. Yes, sir. Mm, bye-bye. You too. All right, you're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. Again, I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open, and we're about halfway through the show now. So if you have a show, if you have a question, give us a call. You have a toll-free number, which is 877-943-9673. That's 877-943. 943-9673. And let's go to Lois in Oldsmar. Hey, Lois, you're, you're on. What can I do for you? Hi. Um, I was just calling because if we end up going into a nursing home and we have assets, how can we keep them away from the government, you know, instead of them taking them for our um, stay in the nursing home? All right, well, the government's not going to take your assets, number one. So the question really should be, if I were to go into a nursing home, how can I protect my estate and get the government benefits that I might otherwise be entitled to? Because otherwise, if you don't, then you might have to be on private pay, and that would slowly evaporate your estate. I mean, is that that the question? Yes, you have it perfect. All right, good. So basically, uh, we have a you know a VA Medicaid planning attorney in our office, and basically that attorney, his name is John Fraser, mm-hmm. w- would uh, if he was meeting with you and trying trying to answer that question and do some planning for you, he would make sure you had a durable power of attorney that allowed your son or daughter or some other person you trust as your power of attorney to orchestrate moving assets around to put them in non countable categories. If you had to go into a nursing home okay. and, and there are certain things that are exempt that are non-countable assets. So you'd qualify if you, if you just had a homestead, that doesn't count. You'd qualify mm-hmm. if you had a homestead and some cash and stocks and bonds, then yes. there's, a, are you married? Yes. Well, the community spouse can keep the home, a uh, car up to $128,000 and the nursing home spouse could qualify for Medicaid just by shifting assets around a little bit, not not a whole lot of extra planning there. If you had more than one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars, the home is still exempt. If you're, if you, um, and you can move other monies into a personal service contract or several other options, so that the nursing home spouse would qualify for Medicaid. The community spouse can keep those assets, rearrange things, and keep a lot of other assets. And still qualify for Medicaid, so you're not paying six, eight thousand dollars a month in the nursing yeah. home. Okay, would uh, we need to set up some sort of trust for this, or just come in and talk to your person? Well, you could. I would, but love if you want to come and talk to me personally, that would be great, and we could go over all of these things. We'd probably recommend a trust, and definitely have the power of attorney uh, documents right. in place to be able to do the Medicaid planning later, if necessary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, We're going to make an appointment. Okay, thank great. You. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, let's go to Vance in Lake County. Hi, this is Vance. Uh, I've got a different question than most people have, uh, and that's that uh, I was a longtime blogger in Central Florida as a watchdog blogger, uh, and I did an investigation of a mobile home park where the owner was uh, pretty much uh, acting as a bully and intimidating people and forcing them to move out. Uh, and then they would lose their home because he'd file a, abandonment charges and take it over. Um, and so I wrote an article about it, and two years later he sued me for defamation, along with uh, one of my sources who separately had made a speech about him that he didn't like. <coughs> 
Um, and neither one of us have income. We have uh, been looking for pro bono help for like uh, now it's been going on 27 months since he filed it. Uh, we finally filed a motion to dismiss and um, are waiting for uh, an appointment with the judge for a hearing. Uh, can you give me uh, ideas on dealing with a judge in a hearing process where we're trying to just get him to dismiss the case because there's been no action, and I am very well aware that in defamation, truth is the defense. And I have a lot of truth. It's just uh, I, if I have to put through discovery uh, in documents, it would go on forever. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. So... So does he, the, does the person that sued you have an, have an attorney? You're not the attorney? Does the You're person, I am, does the person that sued you, oh. does that person yes. have an attorney? He actually is an attorney, and he hired an attorney. Um, and uh, they had done minimal work. It's just been sitting there, and my belief is retribution to shut up basically my further investigation. Uh, because a lot of facts and interviews that I have. I have a lot of stuff that has never been published. Uh, the problem is that he calls them to the tenants and he says, I'm an attorney, I will sue you or I will evict you. Mm -hmm. And these are people that are on mostly social security. They're living in trailers. They're yeah. worth between $50 and $10,000. Well, listen, and if so he... listen if. Up. Okay, so if he's an attorney and he has an attorney also representing him, you're not going to do very well unless you have an attorney. And well, but I know I don't have the money to, you know. And what I've called the bar, uh, they keep everybody keeps saying call the local uh, local bar association for a referral. Yeah, they they've got a community uh, legal center. Yeah, they don't even answer the phone anymore because of the pandemic. Have you tried to and, go through the? Through the Florida bar instead of the local bar because they have a, a a referral service also. Uh, well, when you say referral, what you're doing is you're saying referral to an attorney who wants to charge you, you know. Well, X they, of well, they have they dollars. have pro bono attorneys too, though. Uh, for, for through the full, through the Florida I did bar. Contact one, and I can't. I know the answer I got from her was that there wasn't any. Okay. Uh, you know, in other words, they kind of say, go to the community people. And it's, a, it's a, I got to be blunt with you that they're, they aren't working. Okay. Uh, and right. so there's no source. And all these tenants, they have tried to get attorneys, even if they did have the income. And the attorneys say, I only represent mobile park owners and not. Um, yeah. And not, uh, well, you know, there are attorneys that represent individuals, of course, in that type of situation, just haven't found them. Um, well, listen, I don't, you're going to have to, if you're going to continue on the track of doing it yourself, you're going to have to take depositions yeah. and, and prove the truth that you present it because they're going to say it's absolutely not true, but you're going to have to prove it's true, what you said in blog. And I don't know. You're going to have to do depositions. It'd be better if you had an attorney, but if you don't, you're going to have to struggle through yourself and to prove your allegations or what you wrote that, that you know, he's going to prove well, it wasn't true, so you're going to have to prove it was true. So The other lady, she got sued separately because of that speech that she gave. Um, and at a uh, in mobile home manufacturers, uh, the, the Homeowners Association for Mobile Homeowners, and uh, she's almost destitute. She's no. filing a bankruptcy probably just to well, avoid the whole thing. Yeah, well, there's bankruptcy, you know, later, if possible. Um, and if you don't have assets, they can't, you know, get blood out of a turnip or whatever, or blood out of a rock or whatever the statement yeah. used to be. There's, there's nothing to get if you didn't get a judgment. And then you can do bankruptcy if you had to. I mean, that's not yeah. what I'm recommending, but that is a reality. All right, Vance, I don't think I can help you any, any more than that, but thanks for calling. Let's go to uh, Gary in Sarasota. Gary, are you there? Let's go to Benjamin in Tampa and see if Benjamin is there. Hello. Hey, Gary. Yeah. Hi. Yes, uh, hello. I have a simple.
Is okay. somebody else on the line? Well, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're gonna yes, take... I'm here. Hello. All right, let's uh, let's put them both on hold and take one then or something. So who's who? Gary? Yes, All right. hello. All right, Gary. Okay. Um, I got a question. I have a, with a, a living will or whatever it's called, and my daughter is the uh, executor on it or what, whatever position. I'm, uh, I'm not familiar with it because I haven't opened it up in the last couple of years. But um, she's concerned um, that I have a young uh, uh, girlfriend now that uh, in, in her past with her husband, uh, uh, young babes came in and slicked them uh or uh, you know, got her to sign him to sign papers and stuff when he was incognite and or in whatever the word is, uh, and she's afraid that that will happen to me. Is there uh, some legal position in that will that she can be put in first position in case uh, that uh, like happens? Well, you know, she gets me in a weak moment and has me sign papers, or if that you know, or, or stays with me and claims that she. She uh, gets to have the, the the property and stuff. So, Gary, how old are you? I'm 73. And how old is your girlfriend? She's in her 40s. All it's right. Big and are you worried that she might do something like that to you to try to get your money? I'm not worried, but my daughter is because it happened to her, her husband uh, 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 just recently. And then, of course, everybody else is uh, giving her the same, uh, uh, yeah. you know, so, thorn in the side to, you know. All right. Keep so her. Who, who are you most concerned about keeping happy, your girlfriend or your daughter? My daughter. Because, you know, the, like I said, I'm 73. All right. Know, okay. Uh, well, with that answer. Long and okay. With that answer in mind, you do not keep your daughter happy. And with the thought that you probably have a living trust, you yes, could you That's could resign. Uh, you could resign as trustee of your own trust to have your daughter manage, be your trustee for your benefit to manage your money. Okay. And uh, then your daughter, would, uh, then your daughter could protect it. Okay, and that's how it's done. So I've got it down here in Sarasota, out there at Lakewood Rent. So I got to redo it anyway because their married name's not on it yet either. So is that something I would? Uh, yeah, we have an. Uh, we, yeah, we have an office in Lakewood Ranch. If you don't have an attorney to, uh, and just you could resign. Yeah. You could resign your on your trust and make your daughter the trustee of your trust for your benefit, and then she could and, manage assets in the trust. And as okay. long as your girlfriend, do... okay. Go ahead. as long as your girlfriend doesn't take you to another attorney's office and change a trust for her to be the trustee, does she have enough power over you to be able to do something like that? No, unless I'm like my daughter says, you know, uh, incoherent, it's, you know, uh, in some reason. Well, uh, if you really want to protect it, you'd uh, take all copies of your trust out of your living quarters. Uh, get your daughter to take care of things for you as the trustee for your own trust. And then Would that if be the property as well? You know, the home and all of the, that property you talking about? Or are you talking about the uh, personal property? No, I'm just talking. I'm not talking about personal property. Uh, I'll assume okay. that's not of really high value, and your daughter's not as quite as worried about that as she is the rest of the estate. Right, that's correct. Well, uh, I do. I've already been out there under your advice. To I have that attorney in Lakewood Ranch that did my uh, uh, living will or what, whatever that's called already. So mm -hmm. she is uh, the. the uh, I don't know what is she a trustee at this point, or is she the? Uh, well, she once you do the paperwork and resign, she would be the trustee. Okay. Well, what is she now? She's a successor uh, trustee curiosity. in the standby position if you died or became incapacitated. Okay. All right. Well, okay. That uh, now does she have any position? If, just, just in general question. Only position if, you, if only if, if you die or became incapacitated right now, probably. Okay, okay, but she's still the boss, though. Uh, 
the she, girl can't try to slick me or her. She's the boss. If you, know. you if you die or become incapacitated, you're the boss as we as we speak. But we we can. Oh, I see what you're saying. We can so, make your daughter the I, boss if you like. Okay, I get it. Okay, so as long as I'm the boss, uh, uh, I could be uh, slicked into doing something. You could be but, snookered, yes, you know. Gary, you could be. So if you want to protect it, uh, meet with the attorney and get, get your daughter in position to protect things for you. All right, one last question concerning that. Do I still, you know, have the purse strings or she has them completely like, you know, if I'm buying something or, you know, just in general stuff? Uh, she she uh, she would be in control, but she has to do everything for your benefit. Right. So but you can instruct in her. Words, you can instruct her to do something. Okay. So. All right. Well, great. That's. Uh, I bet a lot of people are. <laughs> you've answered some issues for a lot of people because, like, heck, I'm walking around. Everybody's telling me that that's happened too. Well, Gary, here's here's one bit of advice before I go to my next caller. Um, I would do yeah. have an investigator investigate uh, your girlfriend and see what kind of history she has. You know, she might go around with and and take advantage of you know guys in the past, and she might have a history of that. So have a, a yeah. do, do a little back do a little background check on her to protect yourself. Okay. Oh yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Benjamin in Tampa. Or he, Benjamin's on I-4 in Tampa. I don't know where Benjamin lives, but we'll call it Tampa. Yeah. Yes, you know? Yeah, how's the traffic on I-4 this morning? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know, okay. It's there. It is there. Hey, I got a question. Uh, I'm, I'm about 80, 84, almost 85, and my wife is about the same age. And uh, <clears throat> we've been married uh, about 12, 13 years, 13 years almost. And uh, there's no provision, she has no provision for me in the will, in her will. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just wondering, is this, uh, is this the way things go, or is there any way that uh, I can get some partial well all right so is there a pre is there a pre or post marital agreement uh no no let me think uh it's a pre you have a premarital agreement well not a as such it just put uh did not put me into the uh will no my question is do you have a premarital agreement that you signed with your wife no and there's not a post-marital agreement either about, you didn't waive any rights to her estate, basically, in either a pre- or post-marital agreement. Yeah, that's correct. Well, then you, uh, as a spouse, are entitled, in, uh, who owns the home that y'all live in? Well, <clears throat> she does. All right. Uh -huh. All right, so you as a spouse have the right to, if she died first, you have a right to live in the home for life. Or, or you have a right to sell the home and take half the proceeds. No, no, I never would. Well, do no, that. I'm just. No. I'm, you asked me what your rights were, so I'm telling you. Sure. Uh, and yeah, you yeah. also have a right to contest her will. If her will left everything to the everything else to the children, you could contest the will and take a, a thirty percent spousal share or right. Oh, okay. Well, I presume I'll need to get some kind of attorney for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have to file a claim on the estate. Uh, where are your offices located? We have, do you live in, where do you live? What city? Tampa. Okay, we have an office in Tampa. Uh-huh. And we have offices, yeah. we have uh, an office in Sun City Center, office in Tampa. We have two in Hillsboro, two in Pinellas, two in Polk. We have uh, 50, around 15 offices around the state. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, thank you. You've been very helpful. Right. And I presume I'll need a lawyer to set this up after. If, yeah, if she if died she first. For me. If she died first, yeah, we'd be we, you would have those rights. We'd be glad to help. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Hey, you're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. Again, I'm Attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. You have uh, about 10 minutes left in the show at 877-943. 
That's 877-943-9673. Let's go back to Phil up in Jacksonville for some advice for the fellow in the trailer park. Yes, Phil. Thank you. Sorry for calling you twice. Uh, Joe, uh, if that gentleman is still uh, listening, uh, I've had a familiar uh, realization with that through people I know. And it just took them forever to get, ever get started. So we recommend they do a GoFundMe go go fund account for that purpose only and talk to their friends and relatives and everybody they know, put it out there on their blog. And the money came rolling in. They were able to get started and get an attorney, uh, et cetera. And you have a great day. Thank you for all All right. Thank you. Well, GoFundMe. That's, you know, you see that work in lots of different cases for lots of different things. And there are people out there who uh, might be interested in help support against a bully. As our caller called the attorney who owned a trailer park uh, a bully. So I'll just use the same term. And you can do a start a GoFundMe page. Hey, I'm attorney Joe Pippen. Ask an attorney all about Florida law. If you have a legal question, hey, you know what you need to know about uh, GoFundMe pages? The money that you give to those you're doing it out of your heart you should not be expecting the deduction because most of these go fund pages are don't have a charitable tax number so it's just for your advice it's a good good causes you want to support are great and tax issues are not always uh and very very important but i have heard stories from some clients who gave money to a gofundme page and thought they were going to get a tax deduction and they did not so just be aware about that let's go to steve in st petersburg yeah, um, my wife is on too, Sharon, and uh, when we get back to being able to travel, sometimes when we go to a place, we'll go rent a car. Uh, when we rent a car, I've been told several things. They said, well, uh, don't take out the extra coverage that they recommend because your credit card company will take care of that uh, or uh, your own insurance company, and we'd like to know what do you know about uh, traveling and renting cars and what we should do? Well, let me tell you the what, I'll give you the what, what I've done or what I would do answer. Uh, in the past, when I've rented cars, I've never taken out the extra insurance because my, my insurance, I have very, very good insurance, and my insurance would cover it, so I, it was not needed. So if you're in a position, you might want to call your insurance agent and tell them, you know, is there any reason for me to get rental car insurance? Um, sometimes you, they would, the rental car insurance would not have as large a deductible, you know, that your own insurance right. has. Uh, but you, I would just call my agent and say, look, I'm, you know, my been thinking about when I'm going on trips, do I really need this extra rental car insurance? What's your suggestion? And see, see what your own agent tells you on that regard. Yeah. And, and then so uh, our own agent would tell us about uh, if, if there's an accident, what, uh, what the um, uh, property damage and the liability for injuries and all of that stuff yeah. that would be, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're probably, it right. could be very well be the answer would be you're fully covered under your own insurance and you don't need it, but let, let your agent... Um, answer that question for you based on your own policy all right thanks for your help thanks let's go to diane in st petersburg good morning attorney pippen good morning question regarding the um gifting um, okay the fifteen thousand dollars yes um we had a troubled well i have a troubled stepson he's almost 30 and he's turning his life around and we're thinking about helping him out um does he pay taxes on a fifteen thousand dollar gift? No, the the uh, amount of the gift is not taxable income to the receiver, okay. and it's only a requirement of the giver to file a tax return if it's more than uh, fifteen thousand. But then you can use up your lifetime exemption. Okay. And the best gift, of course, uh, is is cash because if you sold a stock and liquidated the stock and made the cash from the liquidation of the stock a gift, there might be some capital gains tax you would incur. If you cashed out some, if you took money from a annuity, you know, if you took extra money out of an annuity, uh, part of that might be 
income taxable. So the best gift the, the best gift for the giver is to give away cash because there really aren't any tax implications if you're under fifteen thousand on that. Okay. And all of our annuities are um well they're some traditional IRAs, some Roth. So if we took it out of the Roth Took it out of a Roth, you'd be fine. Um, if you took it out of an IRA, you'd be paying income tax on taking it out. Right, right. Okay, very good. Thank you for your answer. Happy New Year. All right, Happy New Year to you. Let's go to Joe in St. Petersburg. Hi, Attorney Joe. Um, th this is a general question. I have a teenage daughter, and is it best, and she drives, is it best to have the car in her name or in both of our names the, she falls under my insurance, so I'm I'm asking this in regards to w what are the liabilities, if anything would happen, which way is the best? Well, I always think it's better to put the car just in their name and let them have their own insurance, which is not going to be as good as your insurance probably, but it, that that's the answer that protects you. How, how old is she? Uh, 17. Yeah, I probably can't put a car in her name until she's eighteen. Okay. Um, well, could the car uh, could the car be in her name and the insurance uh, under 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 mine? Well, I would. And does that make a difference? I would. The best advice would be to have the car just in her name when she's eighteen, and have right. her have her own insurance. Okay. Because she's going to have a lot less. She's going to have a ten twenty policy or something like that. She's not going to have your hundred or three hundred or whatever type of policy you have. She's going to have less coverage. But I don't think an insurance company is going to put her as an owner of her own car onto your policy. I think they're going to require her to have a separate policy if she owns the car. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Happy Let's go to Happy Holidays to you. Happy New Year. Let's go to Wendy and Largo. Hey, I've inherited probably uh, over 100000 this month, and is there any way to avoid capital gains tax on it? It came from my dad's uh, bank account. So it had to go into Well, no, inheritance, uh, well, inheritance, the stocks upon death get a stepped-up cost basis, so you should have been able to receive that without a capital gains tax. It was an automatic step-up in cost basis. And you can sell it That's for the new point. value without without a capital gains tax. But that wasn't stock. It was just coming from a bank account. That doesn't matter? No. There was the stocks uh, with just regular cash in a regular account. There's no capital gains tax on that. Okay. Also, we sold a lot this year, and the money we made on that, is there any way to avoid capital gains? Well, the real estate got a stepped-up cost basis, too, so there wouldn't be any capital gains tax on that upon death. Okay, that's all I needed. Thank you. All right, Wendy. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, you've been listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. We're here every Saturday morning, 8 o'clock. You're listening on multiple stations around Florida, 570, 910, 860, 930, the Salem family of stations. So some of those have FM components as well. Uh, Sun City Center, 96.3, 100.1 FM. Uh, they're all, uh, so that's a local community station there in Sun City Center. Also in Jacksonville, WBOB, The Answer, coming out of uh, Jacksonville. We also 90.3 FM in uh, Haines City, Florida, owned by Landmark Baptist Church. Lots of stations carry this uh, program, Ask an Attorney, all about uh, Florida law. And one of the Christmas presents we got, uh, yesterday was in one of these uh, Echo machines. So I said, um, Alexa, find Ask an Attorney all about Florida law. And guess what? It, it found it. And uh, we I got to enjoy for five seconds before my family made, <laughs> made me turn it off. Uh, I was just wanting to see how smart Alexa was. And they found Ask an Attorney all about Florida law and went right to a, one of the latest uh, shows there. So that's pretty neat. Also, if you have an iPhone or an Apple, uh, we have a, an app, an Ask an Attorney app with lots of previous shows. Most of the stations I mentioned have uh, also have uh, on their radio stations. You can go there and listen to multiple shows. Hey, I'm Attorney Joe Pippen wishing you a happy, happy new year. 
And I uh, look forward to being again with you next year many times. So be safe out there. So long.